Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel Say What's Real TV. This review is for Tyler Perry Sisters Season 5 Episode 19, Truth Hurts. So we open up the episode where we left off last week with Andy telling Fatima do not let Karen come between her and Zach. We know that Karen overheard that and she basically was telling Fatima, please don't. So Andy had to check her real quick, like I'm having a private conversation with Fatima. I gave you a key to my apartment and basically it was not for you to be barging up in my place unannounced listening in on my conversations. Karen uh, was like, she knows that. So Andy was like, well, what you doing here? What do you want? And Karen told her she was there to apologize, so Andy felt like she deserved that apology. Karen told her, no, you don't, but I'm going to give it to you anyway. Karen is one of those types that that same mush that Zach got to the face last week, that's what Karen's mouth make you want to do to her real quick. Like, just like, ugh, girl, shut your ass up. Like, who are you talking to? Like, oh, my God. Andy told her, look, the way you attack me in your home, I deserve an apology. Karen looking all crazy, and she was like, look, I have always had your back. Karen said, no, you haven't. Andy told her, I'm sad you feel that way, and told her, look, I deserve to be upset this time, meaning, Karen, you're always the one upset, and she let you slide, but this is her time to be upset, and Karen once again want to top that and say, I have the right to be just as upset. So Fatima says she's going to go ahead and leave, but Andy tells her, no, you're not. You're going to stay right here. Karen once again rolls her eyes and look at Andy like, oh, really? So Andy had to let him know that she was sick of all the shit. You're my friend. Fatima's my friend. I'm not going to betray you. I'm not going to betray her. She basically can be friends with who in the hell ever she want to be friends with. Because y'all have to remember, everybody's damn grown and can do what the hell they want to do at the end of the damn day. <laughs> so anyway, she said, I'm not going to tell. I don't tell what you say to her and whatever, vice versa and all that. So Fatima asks them what happened and Andy tells her why she got kicked out of Karen's house. They bring up the whole picture thing and Karen feeling like she was withholding the information and they going back and forth about how she didn't know and what she didn't know and she didn't know Zach was going to do all this and that and the other, whatever. Fatima told Karen she was the reason why Andy didn't say anything about the picture because she asked her not to and those two go back and forth. Karen said it wasn't her and Fatima like, well, Zach seemed to think that you did and she said she didn't all this and that and she ended up telling her uh well why was you kissing them and she was like well I wasn't kissing him on the mouth I kissed him on the cheek but if I wanted to I could have and there again would be that mush to the face you know mush to the face and Fatima told her no you couldn't have and she was like well what you kissing him for anyway like kiss on the cheek in the mouth no matter what it was why you kissing him so Karen was like, uh, you really want to know? Fatima was like, I asked, didn't I? And Karen says, <laughs> if you're going to have an attitude about it, you just might not find out. I'm like, oh, my God, mush to the face, mush to the face. So Fatima says, Karen, I'm standing here as calm as I can. And Karen said, good. <laughs> so she going to tell her, she say, uh, look, I hugged and kissed the father of my child to thank him for the child support offer or whatever. So I don't have nothing to look back on. And she let Fatima know, look, I'm moving on with Aaron. And she said, and I don't know who decided to ruin your day. And basically, I don't give a damn. <laughs> I'm like, Karen going off. <laughs> but it's still mush to the damn face. So Karen also let Fatima know that she didn't appreciate the whole situation with Zach in the restaurant and him putting his hands on Aaron. Fatima actually agreed with all of that, and she wanted her to relay that message to her man. And, you know, Fatima was like, you know, cool, whatever, she'll do that. And I agree with Karen 100% on that whole Zach thing because he had no right 
to automatically assume she had anything to do with that and to be looking for her like that and then end up fighting with Aaron. That made absolutely no sense and he just, that just was ridiculous. So anyway, Fatima decides that she's going to go home to talk to Zach. That's what she said. She's going to go home to talk to Zach. So once Fatima leaves, Karen says to Andy, you know, like I said before, I'm sorry. Andy says, I'm sure. And Karen says, are you going to get over it? I'm like, are you, what? Because you tend to uh, hold on to things and then you start acting funny. Andy tells her, uh, I'll get over it. But that the thing about getting over it, yeah, I may get over it, but I'm not going to forget how you treated me. You had that one time to show me how you really felt about me. You had that one time to really hurt my feelings the way you did. And guess what? You won't get a second chance to do that. Karen, that's what I would have told her. But to me, that's the way uh, Andy's standing there looking any goddamn way. So Karen going on all about all this other stuff. Was she getting ready to go to the salon and do this and do that? Andy's still standing there looking a certain kind of way to me. And I feel like their relationship is going to change because of this whole incident. And that's just me. But we know from week to week, all this stuff be one way. And the next week, they be back to normal like nothing ever happened, swept under the rug. But in this particular scene, I feel like Andy's attitude towards Karen is different. Andy likes to hug she told her she loved her, and it was like, I know. She didn't say, I love you back. She didn't hug her goodbye. She didn't do any of that. It was like, uh, I'll talk to you tomorrow. It's kind of cold, cold shoulder type attitude, kind of the same way she probably did Robin when Robin hurt her feelings in that office. And you see Robin's been trying his hardest to work his way back in there. And the only reason she talked to Robin is because she had an agenda and she needed him. Other than that, Robin would have ass would have been grass. But Karen, I feel like Andy feels a certain kind of way about how Karen treated her. And we'll see what happens from here. So we get over there with Gary still sitting in the steam plant this time of the night doing some kind of research. So he calls Hayden back lets him know that the money that Robin was talking about is indeed in the account. He got a friend of a friend of a friend, probably Angela's friend, that knows, um, works in the wire transfer place that gave him the name of Harry Wells Clayton or Clanton or something. And just so happens, Hayden knows that, remembers that Andy repped this person at the law firm and also knows Harry's brother. So what a coincidence, right? Oh, child, please. He says to Gary that he will call the brother tomorrow. Gary wants to know, can he resend the money, like take it back or whatever? Of course, Hayden doesn't have a clue. So they get to talking about Andy and whether she put the long shark guy, Harry, onto Robin and whether she wants Robin in the company or not. And Hayden, he's rubbing it all in. Gary getting mad as hell. And um, <laughs> Hayden had to let him know, hey, the truth hurts. Hence the title of the episode. So he was like, look, I got to go. So he hangs up with Hayden because now he's going to go call Andy. Andy, she's trying to get ready for bed. He's over there wanting to beg and plead. Can he come to her house? And so she was like, look, you know I got to go to work. As if she don't always got to go to work. He'd be over there every other time. Y'all getting ready in the morning while she going to work. Anyway. So she agrees to let him come over. So we head over there to Zach and Fatima's and Zach is laying on the same sofa he claimed he didn't want to be laying on in the first place. <laughs> so Ann walks Fatima. He jumps up like, oh, come here, come here, please, please, please. He's begging and pleading. He's begging and pleading. I thought he was James Brown for a minute. Please. Like, oh, my God. So annoying. Fatima says, oh, I just came here to get some clothes. Like, girl, why are you playing games, Fatima? Why are you playing games? You know damn well you didn't drive all the way back over there to get no clothes. You left Andy's house and told Andy, I'm going to go and talk to Zach. Talk. T-A-L-K. Talk. You didn't say you was going to get no clothes. So, girl, when that changed? You're playing games. Then he's still begging and pleading, child. Still begging and pleading. She talking about, oh, you didn't have the right to talk to me like that. Girl, what, how were you talking? How were you talking, Fatima? Because I'm 
I, I, I mean, was there a deleted scene or something that the audience didn't get to see? Because I must have missed something. Because all this, with you coming in here playing the victim like you did absolutely nothing wrong, it's baffling. <laughs> it's, I mean, you haven't apologized for anything you did. You mushed a man in the face. You cursed him out. You quit the holler about, you must not know about me. I could have another in a minute type attitude. You, you say that every time you get mad, how you can quickly call up somebody else like they on standby. You say that every time, but oh, no apologies from you. And why you didn't tell him that Karen confirmed the fact that nothing happened? Why you didn't apologize for jamming that phone up in his face? Let's talk about all that. Not that you worried about, oh, you acting like you don't want me here. When was that, Fatima? When he act like that? Before you even walked out the door, before you mushed him in his face, he told you don't go. He said don't go. So we head over there to Karen's and Aaron has made breakfast for her. But she can't eat because she's dealing with morning sickness. So she told him she'll get a smoothie or something later. Uh, she tells him thank you and that she's also sorry for him having to deal with all the foolishness that's going on. Fighting with Zach and all that other crap. And of course, Aaron, you know, nothing bothers him. It's like no problem. Everything's fine. No problem, no problem, no problem. And, you know, basically she brought up Zach and the, the basketball court and told him to be careful because Zach is the type that once something gets in his head, he can't let go. So I don't, I'm not, I'm not sure if she's suggesting that he's going to keep trying to fight him, which I mean, hell, every time he sees him, he goes off anyway, which I still don't understand that. And I wish he would stop doing that. But Aaron, he's not phased. He was like, he'll be fine. It's no problem. It's a new day. He's moving on. Karen tells him she loves how he takes care of her and they have their cute little banter or whatever. He lets her know he'll stop by the salon and check on her later and it is what it is. So we go over there to Sabrina's house and she gets this phone call from Bio and he says he has more questions he would like to ask her and he hopes she's not angry about the night before of him saying no to giving the money. Of course she isn't, so he wants to know, can he come back over? She immediately says yes, and but she looks over, and, she's, and we see Calvin laying up in her bed fully clothed. I'm not sure why Calvin is over there. I don't get it. So anyway, she hangs up with Bayo, and she goes to tell Calvin, um, I need to talk to you, and... She tells him straight up, um, Bio is on his way over here and he gets in his feelings. He's like, oh, I have a fight with this guy and he was rude and disrespectful and you still want to talk to him. And she was like, well, I like him and we're not together. So she tells him that he's coming over to talk about Maurice. And he was like, well, what do you got to do uh, in order for him to be helping you? And she was like, what you trying to say? He was like, oh, nothing. She was like, oh, so don't be like that. Like, basically, this is all for Maurice. Again, Calvin, she just told you that the two of you were not together. So what difference does it make what she got to do to get the money from Bayo? Hunching you ain't getting it done. So Bayo, he gets there and he comes in to let Sabrina know that he thought about what she asked him. And he said he had to think about it because $1.5 million is definitely a lot of money. He wanted to know, was she sure that Maurice would uh, not jump bail or whatever? And of course, she's like, she's sure. So he said, yes, he'll do it. Sabrina, she's elated. She immediately starts crying tears of joy. Bio, he's happy for her to see her that happy and he loved to see it. So she was like, oh, I got to call my lawyer friend. So she gets on the phone and call Andy. Andy was like, sorry, I didn't get uh, anything on Maurice yet. And she was like, don't worry about it. It doesn't matter. I have me an amazing friend who is willing to give up the money. And Andy was like, you got a friend that's going to give you 1.5? And she was like, yes, yes. What do we need to do? Andy told them to text Bio's information to her. When she gets to the office, she'll take care of everything. Sabrina, you know, she's still happy about it. And she wants to know how long it's going to be. And it was like, you know, she'll let her know more once she gets to the office. But 
Andy was like, hold up, wait a minute, before you get off the phone, uh, excuse me, ma'am, but uh, who is this little friend you got, girl, that got all this cheese? And <laughs> Sabrina was like, it's amazing. Like, basically, girl, don't worry about that right now. You know, we'll we'll talk about that later. So Andy just told her she'll give her a call later on when she has all the necessary information. So Sabrina's still excited. She keeps thanking him. She can't thank him enough, and he's happy to do it. And he says he's he wants to meet this friend, and she was like, you're definitely going to meet this friend. And I'm like, what friend is he talking about? Is he talking about Maurice, or is he talking about Andy? But I don't know. So he was like, uh, do you want to go out for breakfast? And of course, she wants to go out for breakfast. This time, she got all the time in the world for Bayo, but when he couldn't do nothing for her, you know, she didn't have the time, but you know, you know how people be doing. But anyway, she even um, offers to pay for the breakfast after just saying she lost her job and don't know what she going to do. But, you know, it is what it is. So they end up going to Bayo's favorite uh, spot. So we head over there to Andy's place. And of course, Garrett and spent the night and now the both of them are headed to work. And... Gary basically, in a nutshell, told Andy that he knew all about her helping uh, Robin with the loan shark and all this and that. Andy was like, well, why is all this so important to you? And he was like, because I don't want Robin around you. I need him to get lost, go back to London somewhere. And she basically let him know, like, look, you know, I'm trying to get part. I'm trying to become partner and you and all this what you got going on with the shareholders is pushing it further away for me to get what I'm trying to get. So he like, oh, so you trying to play me? And she like, look, it is what it is. I got business moves just like you do. So them two of them, you know, do they little hugging and kissing and all that and whatever. So Maurice ends up calling Calvin, who's sitting over in the apartment, and his feelings, because Sabrina's gone with another man, <laughs> he ends up telling Maurice that... uh Sabrina may be able to get out, get him out. And Maurice was like, well, how's she going to do that? And he brought up bio and Maurice was being silly, trying to act like he don't didn't know nothing about it and talking about what? So basically he's joking with him, talking about Sabrina still hunching bio and Calvin, you still hunching Sabrina and Calvin didn't want to hear none of that. <laughs> so anyway, Calvin told him, look, I'll call you in about an hour and let you know what's going on. So before they hang up, Maurice had to tell him about his little new cellmate and how cute he thought he was. And Calvin basically let Maurice know he needs to be careful because he is a sucker for a pretty face. So we head over there to Zach and Fatima's and Zach has made coffee. Fatima's coming down the stairs. Zach still wants to continue to talk and beg and plead and... I see the ring on Fatima's finger, so that lets me know she all right, she good. So I'm not going to go into all of that with the chastising and what did you do and all that, girl. Uh-uh. So she gets this phone call, and she mentions Heather. I guess it's T Tamara calling her about the Hayden and Heather situation. So Fatima asks Zach, has he spoken to Heather lately? And he was like, no, she's not messing with him right now. So Fatima said, well, expect a phone call from her later. Zach wants to know, well, how do you know all of that? And she told him about how Tamara um, is going to go into this little jealous rage and make Hayden drop Tamara, um, Heather as a client. And he was like, well, who are you right now? I'm like, oh, now we going back to being all this Bonnie and Clyde stuff and playful acting as if nothing ever happened. Okay, I see. So Fatima says, uh, well, I'm not a bitch. You know, I don't want to be this bitch. You know, I'm really a nice girl. So Zach, you know, he wants to continue to keep talking. And he was like, well, can we talk about it later? She was like, I guess. He was like, better yet, I'll be at your job for your lunch. She was like, oh, um, let me think about that. He was like, I'll be in the lobby. Like Zach can be such a bugaboo sometimes. So now we get over there with Danny. She's in the bed with Q. Apparently, they done already had sex. Now she has this barrier in between them, a uh, barrier of pillows, uh, so he she can keep his thing up off her throughout the night, I guess. And now she's in that mode where I done got what I needed from you. Now I need you to get up and get out, convict. She's worried about the ankle monitor again. 
Now she's convict this, convict that. Do your people know where you are? Like, Danny, it doesn't even matter at this point. It's a little too late. You already slept with him. So, you know, it is what it is at this point. Q, you know, he's playing the game, always, you know, trying to be coy with every little thing. So they go back and forth. He is begging to go take a shower. She keeps saying, you need to leave. So she ends up letting him go take a shower. And when she go, when he goes to take the shower, she gets a phone call from Preston. So Preston is asking, can he come over before she goes to work? He just wants to see her. She's like, no. Her answer is no. It feels like he's begging. Preston tells her she's he's not begging, you know. He's trying to do the right thing by her and at least call first because apparently he's uh, known for just popping the hell up. So good thing he didn't pop up this time, which I really don't think it would even make a difference. But, you know, whatever. So they go back and forth and all of that. And she keeps telling him no. And her answer is no. And just leave it at that. And he agrees to... Uh, see her later or she agrees that he can see her later so they hang up then we get this bamming on the door um danny she's getting ready to get up to see what the hell going on but uh, all of a sudden here comes sabrina with her key come barging in she's telling danny oh he's gonna do it he's gonna do it and telling her that bio is gonna pay for maurice to get out of jail and Danny was over there like, okay, that's good. That's good. I got to get me one of those and all this and that. They go on and on. And then Sabrina decides she want to sniff Danny's sheets. Talking about who's in there. Who's that? And Danny was like, well, you don't know him. So as she's trying to get Sabrina up out of the room, here comes Q walking out the bathroom with a damn Q-tip in his ear. Talking about does she have something? And they both look at each other at the same time like, oh, my God. And <laughs> Sabrina is like, Danny, what are you doing? And the episode ends there. Ooh, child. Danny has finally gone to know who the hell Q is. But hey, it's a little too late at this point. She has already slept with the man. So I am curious to see how she handles this situation. If it makes any difference to her whatsoever. Like, are, are I mean, is Q going to be in there and won't leave? I mean, he does have to go to work, so I don't know. Is he going to give his P.O. Th this address saying he lives there now and not able to leave that way? I don't know. I'm just interested to see what the hell going on next. We see in the trailer next week some man showing up to Zach and them house looking for Fatima and claiming to be a baby's father to who we don't know it might be edited all crazy but it's gonna be interesting so thank you guys for watching thanks for listening and i'll catch you on the next one peace